we return to East Avon while it is still under major reconstruction. There is much to do and many adjustments to be made. We must get the kilns burning again. Deep out in the forest, our clay mines are beginning to run deep. As the temperature increases, we extinguish the braziers. Our tunnel under the castle has been gradually progressing. It should one day provide a secret escape route. We've also dug out a large pit that will eventually be used as an underground cold frame. This will allow us to grow longer into the cold seasons. In order to make leather armour, Avota begins buying all the leather she can. We also get two medicine shelves to make an infirmary. Before Avota could get back, our worst fear came to reality. The river bandits were making a surprise attack tonight, and our defences were in tatters. Johnny lured as many as he could away. If we could split their forces, we could more easily defeat them.
It was a messy battle, but we managed to win. Mordred proved himself a hero. Mary quickly healed Mordred, and we got back to work. We know Avota has brought back some medicine shells, but we could not find them. A good trick to use in these situations is to create a high priority stockpile with the item you want to find. Then let the dogs find the item for you. We have a lot of enemy weapons, so we build more weapon racks for storage. We are producing clay bricks faster than we can mine the clay, but we should eventually catch up. Our new defensive walls are certainly going to need a lot of clay bricks. I build a small storage hut next to the clay mine. This will hold mechanical components for traps and some spare wood. As always, Avota's trading should boost our construction materials. In the late spring, we are struck by a hailstorm. Fortunately, the storm did little more than get us wet, and so we continued to build. After years of work, we were finally ready to create our first river diversion. The late spring of 1356 is when East Avon would begin to form its landmark features of idyllic waterways and a floating red castle. We were glad to see that the foundations were successfully waterproofed. The kitchen, the cellar and the mines below were all completely dry.
the Great Hall now had scenic views from every window. One important bug to watch for is that if a door is built on top of water, it will break your room and enemies or animals can swim under the door like it's not even there. A wall under the door fixes this. It could already be patched by now, but it's worth checking that your room is still a room if you've built this way. Our defences were looking very promising. It did not take long for an opportunity to test our defences. The looters had heard rumours that East Avon had deconstructed its defences. They arrived wet and hungry with some 46 bandits strong.
Explorers had managed to sneak in where the walls were unfinished and grab or destroy what they could. It was a victory for the scoundrels, but we ended 38 of them in the battle and hopefully thinned out their numbers so that they could not raid anyone else. As always, we soon got back to work. We certainly had some walls to finish, but we were almost done. Before we knew it, it was summer again. In order to better temperature control the castle cellar, I wall off the stairway down from the kitchen. The door will slow down movement a little, but high priority ingredients are already in the kitchen and should be replaced by the working dogs as they get used. Doing this brought the temperature down to 4 Celsius, a perfect refrigeration temperature. Given the success of that, I try to do the same with the kitchen itself. Athelstan's kitchen is gradually shrinking, but I'm sure he would prefer functionality over space. Another hailstorm seems to be typical East Avon weather. So the kitchen stove still produces heat when used, but the temperature should be good when the kitchen is idle. The hailstorm soon comes to an end, much like this episode. Our defences are looking strong, and in the next episode, we can consider our next builds. Thanks for watching, I'll see you then.